hope his parents are proud of him. This is an absolute joke and he is a disgrace. That's what Judith Hobson said to the New Zealand Herald after her attacker who fractured her eye socket was discharged without conviction in a New Zealand court yesterday. Does that sound like a just justice system to you? Well, wait till you hear the reasoning and who's behind the reasoning. Because quite frankly, this is one of the most disgusting court decisions I've seen so far this year. And given how the court's been going recently, it's a pretty pretty high threshold to have a really, really disgusting one. Um, because the the courts are just consistently getting things wrong and it is it speaks to just this this mentality in our justice system which is promoting putting the offenders ahead of the victims and that's of course at the expense of justice so what is it why why is it that this individual got discharged without conviction well it's because he has ADHD and autism of course what why else you know neurodiversity is basically a get out of jail free card and so what did I have to say to say about it? Well, firstly, I said the, def- the defense claims that his ADHD and autism rendered him incapable of at- intending to commit the act. Yet seemingly neither his ADHD or autism rendered him incapable of choosing to attend a mass counter protest and place himself on the front lines of what became a violent mob. No judge of credibility could possibly believe a discharge without conviction in this case was appropriate. Because let's be real, he knew what he was doing there. He attended of his own free will. He even had a sign at one point. I'm not sure what it said, but he had a sign at one point. He was very clearly an individual that, despite having ADHD and autism, is more than capable of understanding what it is he is doing and making decisions. So what he did do was make the decision to assault a woman, a woman in her 70s, to the point where he fractured her eye socket. Now, I'm sorry, but how can any judge look at those facts and say, yeah, no, there's no way he intended to do it because he has ADHD and autism. We'll just discharge him without conviction. No problem. Seriously. Now, Judge Glubb is responsible for this decision. He says, the court also recognised that neurodiversity has an impact on the way people interact with others. I'm satisfied by a reasonably clear margin, a conviction would be out of all proportion to the gravity of the offence. Seriously. A conviction for a criminal offence is out of proportion, out of proportion for a criminal offence. There's no way we should hold someone accountable because that's just out of proportion. How dare we look at someone with neurodiversity someone who was more than capable of making the decision to attend a trans rights activist rally or counter-protest, put themselves on the front lines of what was a violent mob and assault someone, their neurodiversity renders them incapable of making those decisions coherently or in a way where they should be held accountable for those decisions. So, does this person hold a driver's license? If they do, uh, should they? Uh, Does this person have any form of employment? Because if they do, well, can we hold them accountable for anything they do at their job? Questionable. Any of these things. Does this person have a, a, a form of autism that is so severe that he cannot comprehend what he is doing? Because unless that's the case, there is absolutely no justification to state that he is satisfied by a reasonably clear margin that a conviction would be out of all proportion to the gravity of the offense. Now, I'm not sure if Judge Glubb actually knows what the offence is, to be quite fucking honest with you. And I'm going to be a little bit sweary in this video because it's just an outrageous decision. Does he not realise that a 71-year-old woman had her fucking face fractured by a 20-year-old man who supposedly has autism and that renders him incapable of being responsible? Seriously. There are plenty of people with a range of mental illnesses which have rendered them near, (laughs) almost nearly, um, you know, unaccountable for their actions, who still go to prison, who still do their time, get on with it, fix themselves up, whatever. So either he goes somewhere where he is institutionalized in some manner in order for a certain period of time because the fact that he has, has autism, just like you would with someone who has severe mental illness, or you hold him accountable based on what the law says. Because he knew what he was doing. We can't sit here and pretend he didn't. Now, mind you, this is the exact same judge 
who decided that a guy flashing his cock in front of a 10-year-old was completely all good. Is he a judge with very good judgment? I'd argue no. I mean, with a name like Glub, I mean, he was always going to come up with some pretty interesting decisions, wasn't he? But seriously, I'm satisfied by a reasonably clear margin a conviction would be out of all proportion to the gravity of the offence. Does he think that a conviction is the end of the world? This is this is something that I actually find to be a, somewhat of a myth in the justice system, that all of a sudden a criminal conviction renders you incapable of having a future. It means that any opportunities in your future are just gone. It's simply not the case. I mean, would it potentially uh, impact some of his travel, travel options? You know, it might be some countries that are a little bit sceptical about having him. Perhaps, perhaps. You know, would you know would um, would it impact some job opportunities for sure? Will it mean he can never get a job? No, but he also has autism, so you know he's already got a restriction on the amount of jobs he can do. And in fact, the jobs he probably can do probably won't care too much about a conviction, especially of one of a a serious but lesser offence. See, if it's me, I, I'm viewing this offence and I'm thinking this is a quite a serious offence, as it should be. I mean, you've it is, for all intents and purposes, uh, all intents and purposes, a extreme violent crime. But hey, the court doesn't see it this way. The court sees it as a misunderstood poor boy with autism who didn't know what he was doing. He just ended up in the wrong place. Just ended up in the wrong place. Not his fault. And he just got freaked out and started smacking a woman over the face for no fucking reason. That, that is as simple as you can put this case. Poor boy. Beats up granny. No biggie, he has autism. What are we supposed to make of this? How can, the, how can the nation have any faith in our justice system when that is the standard being set? How? The simple answer is you can't. There are people who do far less that spend years in prison. I'm not advocating here saying you should be sent to prison, No. I mean, to be fair, I don't think six months would hurt him. <laughs> I think six months would be a wake-up call not to hang out with TRAs who are no good. But, you know, he made the choice to associate himself with violent maniacs. I mean, I still I still picture this. Every single time that this Posey Parker event comes up in my head, I still picture the bloody bloke who looks like he's just been at the gym smashing down, pushing over the, the fencing and breaking it open and running straight into Auntie Hey Hey. I still picture that, and I'm like, how the hell can these people do that and then sit here and try and play victim? It's like, we're the good guys here. It's those those violent extremists who we trapped and nearly crushed to death who are violent and extreme. And, and, and seeing all the comments afterwards from the likes of, you know, Max Tweedy and, and Chanel Lale, and they were so proud of what happened. He's like, Max Tweedy, you know, we, we asserted our... Our voices, you know, we, we let ourselves be heard today and, and what we did and whatever. And this guy to this day still organises events for LGBTQ, you know, pride bloody events and so forth. I think he was uh, involved with the Sydney Mardi Gras bullshit. Which is why it's no surprise that they said the police can fuck off and not attend because of what happened um, <laughs> the other week. So, like, they've got bad actors who are prominent in the media, or at least the media gives them a platform who really are strongly responsible for the occurrences of that day. But not only are they not held accountable, they're still given a platform. But we also have these dickheads who decide that it's fine to assault people that they disagree with, getting let off by the justice system. Where is the justice in a system which is inherently unjust? Because I'm, I have no faith in it anymore. I mean, I didn't even have faith in it when I was in it, but at least I could, I saw some promise there. I saw some, you know what, I have respect for the rule of law, which is why I'm not going to, you know, breach this guy's name suppression order, despite the fact that I do believe we know what it is now. So I have faith in the rule of law, um, or at least I have respect for it. However, it's the application of the rule of law which is the problem. You know, when it's so subjective. I mean, just yesterday we also saw that a police officer has been charged for careless driving or some shit, because he turned his sirens on when he saw someone committing a... Well, saw someone trying to flee. I think it was on a motorcycle or something. And then pretty much as soon as he turned his, his lights on, the motorcyclist crashed. And all of a sudden, it's the police officer's fault. And he's getting charged for, like, careless driving, causing death or some shit. 
like that, that that speaks to an, an internal battle within the police force which i've been aware has been growing and growing over years um and i think a lot of it's ideological but it also speaks to the justice system i mean if the justice system is just they will look at this charge of that police officer and throw it out on the spot will say why are you even bothering us with this piece of nonsense because quite frankly it is nonsense but to the same extent, you would also think that any judge in his right mind looking at the case that we're discussing today would also look and say, OK, yes, this man who is now 21 or 22 has committed a crime. He's clearly responsible because he was not only caught on camera doing it. It's not only uh, most definitely a crime, but I mean, looking at the footage on its on its own, you, you could not deny that it is a criminal offense and that he intended to do it. You could not deny he intended to do it. He threw several punches. You know, there is always things you could say, oh, look, oh, look, it should be it should be a downgraded charge for this reason or that reason or the circumstance, all that sort of stuff. Fine. Convict him of something. <laughs> Don't convict him of nothing. Don't just discharge him and give him name suppression for life. Convict him of something because he did commit a criminal offence and if you want to give some alleviating factors to reduce the charge, fine by me. Just convict him of something. He needs to be held accountable in some way. And a thousand dollars of emotional damages for someone who spent more than a thousand dollars just be, just to attend both the event and to deal with uh, people coming and supporting her and so forth, that's ridiculous. That is utterly ridiculous. So, justice system... Do you want to remain the injustice system? <laughs> or, or do you actually want to get your shit together? Because there are things that the government can do, though I think blaming the government for this particular um, decision is ridiculous, given the government has not had nearly enough time to um, implement policy, which would indeed uh, reduce the likelihood of such decisions occurring. But the thing is, these decisions shouldn't happen in the current, uh, with the current set of legislation anyway, to be honest. I mean, the, the problem is, is, courts set their own precedents, right, a lot of the time. And as long as those precedents are more or less consistent with what the law says, it's fine. And, and as the judge said, he says he re the, he says that the court recognises neurodiversity as having an impact on how people interact with others. That will not only be the result of, um, you know, of, of precedent set, but just probably some aspects of, 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 uh, of legislation. So, yeah, sure, there should be... Uh, the government should take steps to potentially... Uh, propose some amendments to the law which allows for less uh, less consideration of neurodiversity with respect to whether or not a conviction can be um, you know throw, or not thrown out but whether or not someone can avoid conviction altogether for an act that they've clearly committed um, and so sure you know we can do that sort of thing the government can do that sort of thing but expecting that they would have done that in like two and a half three months um, and for something that is very specific and probably shouldn't have happened anyway under the current set of laws I think that's unreasonable to expect of the government. Um, nonetheless, they should 100% pass legislation which deals with this sort of thing because this sort of decision cannot stand. It cannot stand whatsoever. Yeah.